Hi, I'm Nazrin Binti Junaidi. This is Environmental Health Lecture. Your health depends on the environment around you. Environmental health is the study of how the environment affects human health. It differs from the study of how humans affect the environment because it focuses on people's health. An environmental scientist might study how water pollution is hurting fish. An environmental health scientist would study what happens to the health of people when they catch and eat those fish. Environmental health is not just about the health of the environment. It always comes back to you and whether the environment you are part of is helping you stay healthy or making you sick. What is health? Nutritious food help us stay healthy. Regular exercise helps keep us strong and healthy. Doctors, hospitals and medicines help us get healthy if we are sick. Every day, you come in contact with things in your environment that can help you or hurt you. Some of these things are important for keeping you healthy, such as oxygen or medicines. However, some of these things may be harmful to your health, such as tobacco, smoke, or snack venom. Things in the environment that are harmful are called hazards and include things like chemicals, disease-causing bacteria, loud noises, and even stress. Hazards can be natural or human-made. There are many things around us that help us stay healthy. For example, oxygen in the air, nutrients in food, medicine and vitamins, beautiful scenery to look at, and family and friends. Hazards A hazard is anything in the environment that can hurt you or make you sick. Those are bacteria and viruses, harmful chemicals, tobacco smoke, stress, and loud noises. Environmental health careers People working in the fields of environmental health do many different jobs. They work to identify environmental hazards and prevent people from being harmed by them. Some are scientists working in laboratories. Some work for the government writing regulations and studying pollution. Some work for corporations to help make sure that workplaces are safe and that the environment is kept as clean as possible. Most of these jobs require a solid understanding of science and math, knowledge about history and the law, and good communication skills. The seven, to understand the field of environmental health you need to understand seven core concepts. Toxicity Most people working in environmental health related jobs have taken classes in the science of toxicology. Toxicology is the study of how environmental hazards such as natural and human-made chemicals can enter our bodies and make us sick. When scientists study different chemicals in the environment to see if they might be dangerous to humans, they are trying to understand the toxicity of those chemicals. Toxicity is a measure of how dangerous a chemical is. The greater a chemical's toxicity, the less it takes to make a person sick or even kill them. 
The Environmental Protection Agency, for example, uses the following scale to read the toxicity of products commonly used in the home. How would you read these products? And the answers are A bottle of bleach, for example, will have the word danger on the label because it is highly toxic if ingested. Toxicity rating is equals to 1. Borax powdered cleaner, however, is rated as slightly toxic. Toxicity rating is equals to 3 and will have the word caution on the label. This is just one example of a system used to measure the toxicity of hazards. Exposure Environmental health scientists use the term exposure to describe the total amount of a hazard that comes in direct contact with your body. The three parts of exposure. We all know what it means to be exposed to something like a cold or a flu. Every day, our bodies are exposed to all sorts of environmental hazards such as bacteria, viruses, and the sun's ultraviolet UV rays. Some of these hazards exist naturally and some of them are the result of human activities. There are many possible sources of hazards such as cars, industry, even volcanic eruptions. In order for us to be exposed, however, the hazard has to get from the source to us. To do this, it travels along an environmental pathway. Pathways include the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, and even the soil we work in, play in, and use to grow much of our food. Which route will the hazards take? Once you have come into contact with a hazard, it can get into your body through different routes. You can breathe in, inhalation. You can eat or drink it, ingestion. You can get it directly on your skin or in your eyes, dermal absorption. You can also get it directly into your body through an injection. Inhalation, injection and dermal absorption are the three main routes of exposure. Things that help us stay healthy like vitamins, nutrients and medicines enter the body through these routes of exposure. But hazards can use these same routes to enter the body and make us sick. Dose or response. What is dose? Imagine that someone has been exposed to a hazardous chemical through one of the three possible routes of exposure. They have now received a dose of that chemical. Dose is the amount of the hazard that actually enters your body. The amount someone gets into their body, their dose, depends on many factors, including how long you are exposed, how often you are exposed, and how big or small you are. For instance, if someone is exposed over a long period of time to a hazard, their dose will be larger. For example, four hours spent under the bright summer sun would give you a much larger dose of UV rays than 30 minutes spent under the sun. This is called the duration of exposure. 
the frequency of exposure can also influence the dose. If someone works in a factory and is exposed to a chemical every day at work, their dose might be larger than someone who is only exposed once. Dose can also depend on how big or small you are. When a doctor prescribes a medicine for you, he or she calculates the amount of the medicine you should have based on your body size. The doctor can then give you the correct dose of the medicine for your body weight. While a teaspoon of medicine might be right for an adult, it may be far too large of a dose for an infant. The dose you receive can influence how your body responds to a hazard. The smaller the dose, the more mild the response will be. Dose and response relationship. Drinking one can of a caffeinated soda might be fine. Drinking three cans in a row may make you jittery. Drinking five cans of soda might make you feel light-headed and sick. Individual susceptibility. Some people are more likely than others to get sick when they are exposed to environmental hazards. This might be because of their genetics, body size, age, gender, or general health. This is called their individual susceptibility. Genes and susceptibility. For example, some people are more likely than others to get sick when they are exposed to certain kinds of pesticides just because of their genes. We all know that genes help determine things like hair color and eye color, but they also lead to some important and invisible differences in the way bodies work. It turns out that some people have a more extreme response to certain pesticides because of their genes. These people are said to be more individually susceptible to pesticide poisoning. Someone who lives or works on a farm where pesticides are sprayed might want to know how susceptible he or she in order to avoid exposure and stay healthy. Risks and Benefits What are the risks and benefits? We live in an industrial society that depends on the use of both natural and human-made chemicals to function. The use of these chemicals results in benefits to society as well as risk. Pesticides, for example, make it easier to grow fruit. Unfortunately, in some cases, Pesticides can make people sick. Most of us have heard that we can reduce the risk of getting sick without giving up the health benefits that fruits offers by washing or peeling the fruit before we eat it. Scientific researchers and government officials measure the risk and benefits that we face when we manufacture or use certain products. They work to explain what they have learned to the public and create safety standards that help people protect themselves from unnecessary risk. Their goal is simple, 
to help us enjoy the greatest benefits from the products that we manufacture while exposing ourselves to the least possible risk. By understanding the risks and benefits that we face each day, we can make decisions that reduce our risk and keep us as safe and healthy as possible. Environmental justice. What is environmental justice? Everyone has the right to live in an environment that doesn't make them sick, regardless of their race, culture, or income. This is called environmental justice. The EJ process. Unfortunately, some neighborhoods or communities are exposed to more environmental hazards than others and may suffer higher rates of health problems. These communities often have less economic or political power in society when decisions are made. For example, toxic waste dumps, polluting factories, and busy highways are often built in lower-income neighborhoods or communities of color. Communities recognize this as an environmental health issue and work to seek environmental justice. Community Resources and Action Where can you go in your own community to collect information about an environmental health issue? You can learn more about specific issues, understand environmental laws, or seek environmental justice by using community resources. Community resources include places like the library and the city hall. You could search the internet for local, state, or federal agencies that can give you information about your issue. You can also talk to environmental health scientists at local universities or health departments and ask your teachers and family members what they know about the issue. How can you take action? Once you have gathered your resources and studied the issue carefully, it's time to take action. First, ask yourself what you as an individual can do to help solve the problem. If you are concerned about air pollution, for example, you might decide to walk to school instead of getting a ride in a car. Next, ask yourself how you can share what you have learned with others so that they can help too. Maybe you could write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper or speak to your community council or school board. Maybe you could create a flyer to hand out in your neighborhood. There are many great ways to get the word out and make positive changes in the world Use your imagination and be creative.